OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, welcome to our DLAC mid cycle report. We are from Oxnard. And my name is Jill Wright. My current focus is ESL. I'm in my sixth year of teaching at Oxnard Adult School. I've taught different levels of ESL, including multi-level, literacy, and citizenship. I'm contracted at 20 hours per week. I'm currently the ESL lead, tech support teacher. I'm on the WASC leadership team, and I'm the DLAC lead. And I'm so pleased that Vicki is my team member. Hi, I'm Vicki Costa. I am a TOSA teacher on special assignment, and I work closely with the adult secondary education and the ESL programs. I participate in department meetings and work to support all of our teachers. I've been there four years now, and I am a full-time district contracted teacher, which is at 30 hours per week. I am the WAS coordinator. And I take the lead role working and writing plans and completing the surveys with a principal. And um, also, as you guys heard, Kathy Greaves is our principal. And if she wants to introduce herself really quick, we would love for her to do that. Okay, my name is Kathy Greaves. I can turn on my um, camera for a second here. Um, so I, I worked for Oxnard Adult School on and off uh, since 2010, um, principal of the Alternative Independent Study School Condor uh, all over the district, as well as the Oxnard Adult School. And during the non-pandemic years, we have about eight sites that operate um, plus the main site. And our exciting news is that we're mo moving into a new building next um, Fall will be ready to rock and roll, and we've made mega adjustments in our curriculum delivery. And um, I'm very proud of what our staff has managed to do during all of the restrictive COVID times that we've had. So, excellent job. Um, I'm lucky to have Vicki and Jill as part of the staff. They are perceived mentors for everybody, which is why they're participating in this offering. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy, and thank you for supporting us and our project. Um, and also, as we're giving out thank yous, thank you to Dr. Paul Porter. As so many other people have said, we are also learning so much about our strengths. Vicki and I do work well together. One reason is because we share a core satisfaction in identifying problems to be solved and then working hard with friends to solve them. That's our relator strength. Dr. Porter has, you know, given us the true gift and he's been able to provide us with strategies and tools that it makes an impact utilizing our strengths as individuals. Um, as you can see, uh, Jill and I have several strengths that are similar, but he's also taught us and um, collaborated and worked with us as a team um, and helped us become a smoother team by giving us each an example of recognizing and maximizing our individual strengths and to work closer together. Thanks also to Destiny for facilitating development of our site project and guiding us through that. And it's really, really helpful. Um, a very special thanks to OTAN. Their entire staff has always been supportive for Jill and I. Um, I know they've been very responsive to us. But a special warm thank you to our coach and mentor, Susan. She has been a true leader. She keeps us committed and focused to reach our goal. And we've had some great laughter and fun together as well while we're trying to meet these, you know, little uh, objectives to meet our goal. Thank you. All right. 
So Oxnard Adult School is in Ventura County. We serve adults from Oxnard, Port Wainimi, and Camarillo. They're the surrounding cities. Since 1937, we are part of Oxnard Union High School District. We offer classes in career technical ed, adult basic education, ESL, adult secondary education, US citizenship. We have a program for young migrant students and that's supported by district categorical funds. And this program supports them as they transition successfully into ESL, ASE, and CTE classes. Until the pandemic, we had classes at the main campus and 10 off-campus locations. ESL was offered at eight of those off-site locations. Also, until the pandemic, we had between seven and 8,000 students enrolled. And with COVID, our total dropped to about 4,400 due to COVID and then other reasons as well. Um, Oxnard is in Ventura County and the total population of Ventura County is 847,000 roughly. And it encompasses Oxnard, Camarillo and Port Wainimi area. So most of our students are from those three areas. However, we have been finding we're keeping enrollments at um, other locations as they start to move out and they can participate in the remote um, platforms. Oxnard Adult School student enrollment is predominantly Hispanic. Um, so that's where most of our students are Spanish speakers. And um, a majority of our students have a maximum of a ninth grade level education. And our population, student population is slightly higher in the female um, population. Oxnard is known as the strawberry capital of the United States. Other significant crops are lemons, lima beans, celery, and cut flowers, all grown on 259,000 acres of rich farmland. Although Oxnard is well known for its abundant crops, some of the other sizable jobs include education, health, and professional management. Uh, manufacturing and tourism, hospitality, and other dominant employers are in our area. Um, the naval base and our deep water port in Port Wainimi are a significant part of our economy of this West County. This breakdown also shows that we have a wide range of needs in our community. So if, as you can see, our student population also reflects that as well. Before we started in DLAC, we encountered the following barriers and challenges. We had an uneven distribution of technology, services, and resources, and lack of support for tech use. We had a need to change and expand thinking. We were trying to ferment OAS culture. There was a shift from preconceived notions of learning to incorporating technology as a learning medium and a move forward with technology. Well, once the pandemic hit, we did not know how long we were going to be away from the school. Originally, we thought it would be one week, and it turned into two weeks, then it turned into a month, and then all of a sudden we got notification it was going to be the rest of the year. Um, so we, you can see us gathering PPE, we're trying to continue welcoming and collaborating with everybody, we're just trying to keep our personal connections together and staying in touch with one another and staying in touch with our students so they have a connection to our school. Well, once we realized we did not know when we were going to return to campus again, that this pandemic was real and it's not going away so quickly, we decided we need to move forward. We need to start accepting that we have to make a change, all of us and we have to make distance learning work. And, but how? Well, we decided we needed to not just stay connected, but we needed to start collaborating. We realized once we wanted our, we really wanted our students to attend class, but we knew we could not have them return to campus. So how can we do this? How can we keep them to continue learning? How can we teach them? Can we do this remotely? 
well, once our, once we've realized our students don't have the resources, we don't have the skills or for teachers, our resources. Well, we knew this was going to be a difficult thing for all of us. So we must make a shift. And we decided we were going to do this and we had to do this together as a team. Changes that we've made, sorry, Vicki. Sorry. No, go ahead, you're ready to go. The changes that we have made to continue moving forward include remote testing for all EL civics assessments, more desire to try and utilize online learning platforms. Um, many viewpoints have shifted away from paper and pencil to using text simply by being available and participating in how-to sessions. Teachers are learning to accept that they don't know everything. And yes, we will make mistakes. And teachers are more willing to collaborate with one another and ask for guidance from other teacher leads. So what's next? Well. We know this is an opportunity, it's a shift in our education system. I think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for all of us. So we need to now make sure we can offer a variety of delivery models that will work for all students, even as we start returning from back to campus, even during this pandemic and get back to the real world. Um, because not all of our students are going to be able to come back face to face. And we need to know technology is not a trend, it is here to stay. So let's utilize the resources even when we're back on our campus. So in June, we're going to be moving to a new building where, where technology will be more available. July, we're writing a curriculum for designed for face-to-face -face instruction that teaches students the technology skills required to be successful in online learning. And we're planning also on sharing this out when we've got everything in place. And August, when we start up again, we are planning on teaching and delivering through different mediums, distance learning, hybrid, and face-to-face, -face, August and going forward. You know, this has been uh, challenging, but in a very exciting year, and we are extremely excited that we get to continue working with the DLAC team. And um, we've just, it's been a lot of work, and we are so excited that we can bring all these tools and strategies that we've gained from each one of you back to our school system and back to our school site, to our students and make this happen. We have a wonderful staff and team, um, not only in our school site, but with our district. And we feel that we can go ahead and move forward, especially with the DLAC help and everybody that's a part of this team because each one of you have helped us and our you know, co-DLACers, you guys have been so instrumental to Jill and I keep continuing to move forward. So we really appreciate all of your help. So it takes all of us to make it happen. Um, I agree with what Vicki said. And this year has been one of tremendous growth for us, thanks to DLAC, the pandemic, and all the challenges imposed by our impending move. Oh, and our WASC mid-cycle report. When the pandemic sent us home, we grew because we had no other choice. It was painful. DLAC has helped us articulate that growth and format how we can share these accomplishments with other teachers and students at our site as our DLAC project. Our orientation to online learning curriculum unit will provide a medium for students and for teachers ongoing and online proficiency. Like Vicki said, and so many other people said, technology is not a trend, it's here to stay. And we feel it's our responsibility to facilitate this growth so our students can meet their needs and their families' needs. We must move forward to remain to we must move forward to remain relevant. You know, what we want to also say, we're definitely is just as Jill said, we will share once we develop this curriculum and um, move forward. Obviously, you know, making changes as we go through to see what works and what does not work. We will share with all of you um, because we also want to receive your feedback and to see if we can add anything else to it. But we want to thank you again and we will send you 
a copy of the presentation if you would like. You can see both of our email addresses there. Mm -hmm. And again, we want to thank Kathy, our principal of Oxnard Adult School for um, supporting us through this and making sure that this happens and that we can continue with our DLAC program and our projects. So I want to say thank you to everybody. <laughs>